Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is... What am I? If you know, put it down in the comments. Yeah, that's right. Toys in my shop. They're not mine. Guess what? My name is Russ. What's up, everybody? Let's get started. RWGResearch.com if you'd like to know more. This is the new space I'm continuing to build, and I have a problem. I don't have lights. It is very dark in here, and I need some lights. So, the type of lighting that I tried to get, because I got a good deal, is this type of lighting. Fluorescent LEDs, okay? So these are the two pin. This particular brand, I could not find. This is, I think, a more expensive one. I'm not even gonna show it to you because it doesn't matter. What matters is, this light is 120 volts. I can just put 120 volts across the ends. Voila, 2,000 lumens of light. Um, you can stick these anywhere you want. Realistically, they're supposed to go into a fixture because you got exposed pins, but you can rewire them and make it work. Now, I tried to go get a bunch of these at a really good deal, and most of them you have to not have a ballast or have a ballast. They're kind of mixed right now. So you can just hot swap them. You don't have to change your ballast. However, this one's 120 volt direct. You cannot run it with a ballast. So I ran around town, found a really good deal on a bunch of them, and they're all ballast based. So I put one set up over there and I took the rest back. But they were cheap. They were $2. Uh, I think a whole box of 16 was like 40 bucks. So just over like two and a half bucks a piece. That's cheap. However, so 40 bucks gets me 16 of these lights four foot long. I finally gave up on that because I ran around in circles for a while. And I looked online and I ended up finding these lights. All right. So this is the strip lighting. Okay. I'll get you a close up. These are dual row, 15 millimeter wide strips. Okay, and the reason I like these is because it's a dual strip, not a single row. These are soft white LEDs. Uh, the, I bought the two of these rolls, 16 feet long, okay, 12 volt DC, six amps per roll. They got resistors built on them, so you just have to regulate the voltage. This will regulate the current, and you're good to go. So that's what I wanted to do. So the part number, all right, right here. Yes, it is dark in here. There you go. You can look it up for yourself. I got these off Amazon. Um, and these are $20 a roll. So for the same $40, I was able to get 16.5 uh, feet or so a piece. And that's a lot. Now, what I wanted to do, all right, and this will basically be a lot safer too because it's 12 volt instead of 120 volt. Now, what I wanted to do is I want to put a strip under here. I want to put a strip under here. I want to put a strip under here and a strip under here. And then I want to run two strips along the ceiling here to light up this area. Um, that's about the equivalent of those same uh, lights that I was going to get, except they were 120 volts and I have to wire them a little more hazardly. So what I wanted to do is right here on the, on the bench is a small little power supply. Okay. Let me show you what it looks like. It looks like this little power supply is something that I got in a big stockpile of things. All right. It's just a little power supply. It's got uh, two power cords in the back instead of in the front. And here is the, uh, oh, I just ripped it. Here is the schematic. All right. And the information about it. So it's just a little transistor power supply. And it's one and a half amps. There's the model number. And I, you know, I'll never use this little power supply for anything real. And so I thought it would be really, really cool if I could just walk over here. Okay. Let me make sure this isn't plugged in. But if I could just walk over here, right, and just flip this little guy on and put it about there and all the lights in the shop would come on. I think that'd be really cool. So what I decided I really wanted to do is I wanted to make... Since this is isolated from power altogether, when I turn this on, it supplies power to the unit, which will also supply power to everything else. And then I thought, you know, I could use this as a dimmer control. So everything under the bench can be dimmable, and the lights on the ceiling will come in at the same time, but they will not be dimmable. 
So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to build such a thing. All right. So yes, it's really dark over here. That's the way things are right now. They'll be lit up by the time this video is over. So let me give you a quick explanation of my options. Now, you don't need a current limiting LED driver, okay? Because these have resistors on them and they're built in and we don't have to worry about that, all right? See how they're built in there? So you can cut these every uh, inch, it appears, and each four LEDs have their own two resistors, okay? It looks like one resistor per two LEDs and they're 12 volts. So all I gotta do is just limit the voltage and regulate it and the current will be regulated on these. Now each roll is 16 amps. So I need a total of, <clears throat> sorry, six amps. So I need a total of 12 amps of DC current. Now I have many options for doing this, but don't forget, we've gotta be able to do multiple things here. We go into voltage control, the lights under the cabinet. We want to be able to make those dimmable and we want to just power some elsewhere. So I have a couple of options that I could do. I'm going to run through a few of them really quickly. And all this stuff that you see on my bench is things I've dug out of the bins in my shop here. Um, the first thing we're going to start with is just a regular, you know, brick power supply, right? So this is just a normal wall wart type power supply. These happen to be pretty decent supplies. These are, what are they? These are 50 watt, 4.16 amps at 12 volt. Okay, these are actually Allen Bradley power supplies for the touch panels I've been sorting out. This is not focusing well, there we go. So this is option one. Um, however, you'd have to, to double some of these up to get the total amount of amperage I need. 4.6 amps is not a whole lot. Um, the second option I had, oh, and by the way, in order to dim this, the way I was originally gonna do it wouldn't work very well. So the second option I have is I have one of these toroidal 12 volt power supplies, okay? And these guys are actually designed for lighting, but they're for 12 volt AC, um, those halogen lights. And so it's just 120 in, 12 volt out, and this guy's rated at seven or 6.75 amps, almost nine amps. And so that would be a pretty good deal. However, I have to rectify them. So I found some rectifiers that would work, right? Because this is AC, I poked myself in the eye. Ow, this is AC coming out of here and I need to rectify them. So I need some pretty beefy rectifiers. These actually came out of uh, a uh, alternator and they're pretty beefy guys. They're many, 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 many amps, like 150 amps or 90 amps or something. So I could rectify them, but because this is a 12 volt-ish output, when you rectify them, the voltage goes up, then you have to regulate the voltage. I didn't want to do that because then it's extra circuitry that I don't want to deal with. So the third option, right, is pretty cool. You just take a server power supply or a computer power supply and you just, you just hook it up and you just go for it and it just works. So these are from an unknown source. You know who you are. <laughs> Thank you very much. So these guys are really beefy supplies. Look at that. Yes, you read that right. 12 volt at 90 amps. It's over a thousand watts. It's an 1100 watt power supply. Look how small this thing is. It's a tiny little bitty thing and it's awesome, except when I hooked it up, it didn't work. So I've hacked this guy in, in the back here. <laughs> Poor lighting, but I've hacked it back here and I've touch prongs together to get this guy to turn on and I've messed with a few of these I have a couple of them here's a here's a different one that I actually tried hacking the firmware on <laughs> yeah couldn't get it to work and then here's another one this is what they look like on the inside pretty beefy guys a little fan that used to be uh, right here in this little spot and pull air through the whole thing and unfortunately some of these kick off when they see a certain load I have no idea why these won't drive the LEDs, but they won't. So I'm basically gonna look for another power supply and I'm probably gonna end up using a different style, one of these, all right? So we're gonna find the right power supply <clears throat> and we're just gonna use straight 12 volt DC. I'm gonna get one that will cover at least the 12 amps so I can run all of those power strips from one power supply, okay? Now, 
We got the power supply. I'll show you in the end what I actually use. We got a just a straight up 12 volt DC power supply. So we've got 120 volt AC in. And we've got to be able to turn that on and off with this switch. Okay. So this is actually completely disconnect. I could hack this thing. But I don't want to hack this thing. I did fix this by the way. It had some old bad leaky caps and I replaced it. This guy's a really old power supply. So this thing is one and a half amps and I could drive some of the LEDs, right? This strip right here, all right, this guy, I don't know if you can see how long that is. It's about three feet or so. Um, this guy is exactly about one and a half amps at full brightness. So I could run just one strip, but I want to run all of the lights under the cabinets with this dimmable device. So in order for us to run the non-dimmable lights, I just need a way to turn on the power supply and hook those directly up to that and voila, we're done. So here's what I've got. Um, let me see if I can find one of the other ones. I guess they're all, they're all AC. So this is a solid state relay. You could even use a non-solid state relay. But if you can see here, this one says four to 32 volts DC input and then I can put up to 10 amps on the output, 120 volts AC. Um, the other ones and the common standard for this is actually um, AC to AC, so you have to be careful. This is a AC controlled AC input AC output solid state relay. Here's a different brand. This is a DC input AC output. Okay, so that one's three to 32 volts. So here's the thing. This power supply, when I turn it on, and I get above three volts coming out of it, it will trigger this, which then will turn the power supply on and the lights on the ceiling will just come on. And those, I can probably put an extra switch somewhere so that I can control um, whether or not they're on or off. Cause sometimes I just like to work in the, in the low lighting here, right? And so if I want those off, I'm gonna put an extra switch in there just for the DC, the DC side. And I'll explain all this in a schematic here in a little bit. But I'm going to use this solid state relay to turn the power supply on and off, okay? That will just turn 12 volt on and it'll turn 12 volt off. Now, if I do use a server power supply, these have the extra pin to turn them on and off. However, I don't want any AC connected to these at all unless I'm going to use it because these particulars, uh, they are on even though they're off, right? They're in standby mode and I don't want them on at all. All. So if I connect the hot into my solid state relay, everything else beyond it will be disconnected. And because this has a physical switch in it, it'll also be disconnected. So there's no wasted power here in this standby mode, which I don't like. So we're going to use a solid state relay to turn that on. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to figure out how we're going to make this voltage control, right? Anything above three volts will turn the power supply on, but anything above that, I want to be able to use to dim the lights. So what I found out I could do is right here, all right, I have connected to all these wirings. Ah, not anymore. All right, this, okay, is a MOSFET, all right? It has a gate, it has a source, it has a drain, all right? And what is a MOSFET? Well, this is actually a transistor power supply, and I'm going to be using it to be voltage controlling a MOSFET. So MOSFET is a voltage control device and transistors are current controlled devices. So if you just take a MOSFET like this and you vary the voltage on the gate, it's equivalent to a voltage controlled resistor or a voltage controlled potentiometer. Or you can just be switch on and off depending on how you want to use it. I want to use it as a linear voltage regulator. So this guy will have the 12 volts from here Going into this guy, the gate on this guy will be controlled by this power supply, all right? And then it will let anywhere between about seven volts up to 12 volts through the way I've got it connected. Now on the gate, which I'll show you in the schematic, we've got some resistors on there. You don't want to drive this directly. So I've got a, um, a voltage divider on there and I can uh, get the voltage to be a little more steady. That gives me a little more playroom and it balances out the light evenly, which I'll show you when we get into this. So, oh my goodness, I'm stepping on the brand new lights I bought. What a silly old me. Now, let's go talk about really quickly these lights. So, these lights, all right, 
they don't get super hot, but they get warm. So what I've decided I'm going to do, and these come with sticky stuff on them, what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of this. This is aluminum foil tape, and I am going to tape the lights onto the aluminum foil, and then I'm going to tape the aluminum foil up against the bottom of my cabinet. That will do two things. One, if there's any reason to reflect light, it will reflect the light. But these are all facing down, so we shouldn't have a need for that. And the second thing it will do is it will act as a small heat sink, and it will help cool these down. It's not necessary to do this. I just have this aluminum tape, and I thought, yeah, I will do that. So that's what I'm going to do. I just realized that these two are actually soldered together. That's interesting. Cool. So the first thing I'm actually going to do is because I already tested the schematic, I am going to connect the lights to the bottom of the cabinets. Um, I won't hang the ones up there yet, but I'll have to hang the ones up there somehow. I think I'm not going to attach them to the ceiling, but I'm just going to dangle the aluminum strip in like three points. That way I can get some air under it. But yeah, let's go ahead and get all these lights put up under the cabinets, and then we'll talk about the schematic. Here we go. Let's do this thing. So it took me, uh, I don't know, an hour and a half or two hours. I don't know, maybe less than that. But anyway, I got this all wired up and the wires come back to here. So I've got them just chained together, right, in a long run. And I actually have about, what is that, a foot? I have about a little over a foot left that I can use somewhere else. Um, so the first thing I want to do is to make sure I got my solder joints all right. I'm going to take my continuity meter, put it on here. Good, no shorts. So the next thing I'm going to do is connect it to a power supply. This is a current limiting power supply in case I uh, have this shorted or some other problem. Um, I've got it turned way down. It's just going to dimly light. So let's plug it in. Oh, oh, stay in there. There we go. If I get it to stay, we can call it good. You know, they make these twists on for a reason, I guess, huh? All right, get in there. There we go. Cool. All right, so let me show you now that the lights are on, and maybe we can see a little bit. So one of the reasons I wanted to get this thing turned on is because I need to work here temporarily and make the circuit that we're going to be making. So this will at least give me enough light to do that. So let me show you the little details of how I got this wired. Alrighty. So there they are. So basically, it's real simple. I've got a wire coming right here and it actually goes back in there and it goes out the back and comes out right there. All right, so this, oh boy, focus. Anyway, it'll come back. So this right here, all right, is wired into there. And then this comes up the side, gets wired into there. This one goes out the back in the side of there, comes down the bottom, around the side, and this one actually comes in in this little hole out the top and right there. So by winding them through that little hole like that, I have a less better, a less better? I have a better chance of not breaking them off and this one I just jumped right through that and then this side is open now how I soldered these you can see I actually soldered them in the middle a little bit all right there you go and uh, you gotta be careful because you are well in my case I put that aluminum foil on there and so I need to be a little bit cautious all right so let's talk about the circuit because now I have just enough light that we can actually see what the heck we're doing all right, so the fun begins. These are the components that I'm gonna be using in my circuit. So I have 120 volt AC, this is basically the wall. Okay, at 120 volt AC, 
I have my 12 volt DC power supply. I have my what I'm calling the dimmer, which is my power supply that I can adjust from 0 to 5 volt, which also has a switch to disconnect in it. I have um, a solid state relay. I have an LED that's always on. This is the one that's on the ceiling. I have a dimmer LED, and then I have a MOSFET. So the MOSFET is going to be used with the voltage coming out of this power supply that I'm calling the dimmer. So let's go ahead and connect that first because it is the one that needs the most explaining. So on the MOSFET, you have the gate, the source, and the drain. And um, make sure I got that right. Yes, okay. And so the way this thing works, it's a voltage controlled um, device, semiconductor. So the more voltage you apply to the gate, right, depending on what your, what your source and drain are, then you can vary the voltage coming out of this device. Now, I didn't want to use some sort of a pulse width modulation because I didn't want the lights flickering. So right now everything is a steady state DC. There's no flickering as long as the, uh, you know, the power supply has a good source here. And, my, and this also has good clean signal coming out of it. So, um, yeah. So the source, right, purple is all connections. The source is going to go to this resistor. This is a one meg resistor. Okay, and this is also the ground. So we're going to tie this up here to the ground of the power supply. And then the 1 mega ohm resistor here, which makes up the rest of my voltage divider, gets connected to the positive right there. Okay, so our 12 volt DC source, the negative needs to be connected. So we're going to go ahead and connect the negatives of the DC source and my dimmer together. Um, we also want to go ahead and connect the dim LED, okay? So this is uh, sourcing to ground or negative. So we're going to tie this to the negative of my dim lights, and they're my LEDs. And the positive then needs to go to the power supply. So we've got 12 volts, okay? We've got our dimmer, we've got our LED and our MOSFET. The dimmer is going to control the gate all right, and it's going to control how much of the 12 volts gets through the MOSFET and to this light. So that's how this is connected. Now, in order to get um, power over here, we're just going to go over here and tie power from the hot to the neutral. All right, so this is always on, but there's a switch in here. So realistically, there's a, uh, there's a switch in here that's always off which is good that means this whole thing will be off if that's turned off so here we've got our solid state relay now if this is above 3 volts anywhere from 3 to 32 we want this solid state relay to come on so that we can power the 12 volt DC so that the dimming lights come on and also so the always on lights come on so the always on lights are really simple we're gonna be tying the power source positive and negative to the lights so when this is on the lights are on that's an easy one so how do we get this solid state relay to come on easy we're going to also tie it to this power supply so let's just tie it like this okay so when this positive power is on and the loop circuit comes back as long as this is above 3 volts, then we're going to turn that on. So the only thing that's left is to turn the 12 volt DC power supply on. Also very easy. We're going to tie from the hot all right, into our solid state relay. And then the output of the hot is going to go here to our hot. And then our neutral just ties right here to neutral. And that is how we're going to connect our circuit. So we're using the FET as a very nice voltage and analog voltage control device um, to dim these lights and at the exact same time turning on this solid state relay so we have the 12 volt DCs on and we have our overhead lights on. Now I could put a switch in here right right here and I probably will and the reason I probably will is because sometimes I don't want the overhead lights on I just want um, you know the lights under the bench on and have them dimmed and also this dimming light is split into two benches and I'll probably end up just putting a switch somewhere over here 
um, in my long wire that came around the corner and then I can turn that off as well in case I'm not using that bench and I just want to use this one. Many options here. Um, so this is the whole circuit. Now the MOSFET, I'm going to use actually a couple of MOSFETs. Um, one of them should be able to handle this current no problem. Um, however, I may connect more than one and try to keep the heat down, but they will be connected to a heat sink. So this is going to need to be in a box. Uh, this is, has live wires exposed, so this is going to be uh, need to be in the box. And then I'm going to make um, plugs or adapters to plug all this into my little box so this is safe and not a fire hazard. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and get this done. Oh, I just realized I made a mistake in my original drawing. This resistor is actually connected to the drain in my case. This is the way I had it and this is the way it worked so that is how I'm going to do it. In case you are wondering, this guy is an I R F 3205. This is considered a power MOSFET or a HEXFET. And this is the one I tested. This is the one I'm going to use. I could probably get away with using just one on this big heat sink. So I think I'm actually going to try it. If it gets really hot, I can just add another one in series with it. Um, I'm sorry, in parallel with it. And it'll work just fine. So yeah, quick correction. That's how I had it. That's how it worked. So that's how I'm going to leave it. All right, now let's get to building. All right, so after hassling with all these power supplies, I looked in my bin O supplies and I found this guy. This is actually a power supply I bought for the rodent coil project. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use it and eventually I'll put it back in my project. But right now, this is what I got. This is a 12 volt, 33 amp power supply. I believe I bought this guy for like 20 bucks and the wires are exposed here so i have to just be a little cautious with that but yeah we can power all the lights that we're going to be powering with this guy no problem we technically only need uh like 12 amps so we could put a whole nother strip or two on here and be just fine which is good because i do plan on putting lights on the other side of the shop and it'd be kind of nice to have them all hooked up to one location so let's go ahead and construct this thing this is the box that i had picked out to put everything in what I originally was going to do is just take an outlet, put it in the lid or on the side of this box and pack everything except for the power supply in here. So basically I'll, uh, I'll be able to plug the uh, DC in and the DC out for the uh, one that is dimming. And then I'm going to go ahead and have an outlet so I can just go ahead and plug that in here. And then I'll have a plug. Where is my plug? One of those... You know, just one of those AC adapter plugs. Here you go. So here's the outlet. And then I was going to put one of these in there so I could just plug the uh, black on black. It's not very good, but I could plug the... Uh, well, I cannot see that black on black. Anyway, one of these guys, PC power supply uh, adapter. Put that in here. and Yeah, I think we will uh, do exactly that. So let's get on with this project. Uh, by the way, an original thought with these uh, transformers, which, well, I was going to use a dimmer switch, and then this was going to be a way to set my dimming control. But uh, yeah, we ain't doing that. So yeah, let's do it. Alright, it's been about uh, another two hours, so about, I don't know, four and a half to five hours now. We have completed our box. We've got it all wired up so we can test it, and I want to show you what it looks like. So I've got the lights here on the, on the spool. These get really hot on the spool. You're not supposed to really power them for very long on here. You can test them, but that's about it. It'll melt the spool and catch on fire and actually dis, dis, uh, dismantle some of the LEDs. I've done that on an old, old different roll. Anyway, point is... We're going to have this connected as a temporary thing. 
So as soon as I uh, power this thing on, we should uh, get the 12 volt power supply to turn on and uh, let's see what happens. All right, so there's these lights, but I don't have any under cabinet lights. So let me see if we can bring those up. There you go. So I'm going to disconnect these and plug in a overhead light so that we have a little bit more light. So basically uh, the same thing that turns on the power supply is going to be turning on the overhead lights with my extra outlet. Cool. Let me give you a closer look at this box now that we can see what we're doing. Oh yes. So here's the box. I've got the meter on here real quick so I can show you what the voltage is coming out of our uh, power supply that's up here and we can kind of see when things turn on and when they uh, when they go off so what I'm going to do is just turn the power supply on this is measuring the DC voltage coming out the green light on our power supply will indicate what's going on and then you should see the lights in the background so I've got uh, the overhead light connected as well so you'll see it come on so here we go so power supplies on 1.2 volts when we get closer to 3 our other lights will come on there we go so our other lights are on and our power supply is on but our underneath cabinet lights are not on yet we have to bring the voltage up 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 and there we go so we have uh, we have successfully accomplished our goal dimmable lights plus overhead light control pretty sweet right and that was uh, just a simple MOSFET as a voltage control um, I'm gonna leave this on for a while and kinda check uh, for any heat but it is really not doing a whole lot of work to be totally honest um, it's not switching super fast or anything it's just on so you know yeah cool let me close this box up I guess and we'll uh, kind of finish this project most likely it will be tomorrow because it's about 1230 and I'd like to hang those other overhead lights these are those fluorescent ones that are really bright but the other ones would be right tall All right, guys, it is time for bed. Uh, it's currently 1.11 a.m. Yesterday I stayed up till 3 a.m. And we have lights. Let there be light. Aww. So that is one 16 foot strip cut into two pieces. Um, I have this thought that I could put two more up there. You know, one and one and yeah. Ultimately, mm, it's like not quite bright enough, but almost bright enough. However, there's more lights in the shop. And uh, now we're going to just keep turning up the knob. And there we go. So now we've got just the dimmable lights. I mean the dimmable and those. And then if we plug in the other fluorescents above this bench... Ah, uh, plenty of light, I think. So there's just those. And there's those. Now, actually, those are really expensive lights, these two here. Um, and they do a pretty good job putting out quite a bit of light. Those are the ones that used to be in my 44 square foot dream shop. Now, if we turn the rest of the lights on, I'd have to say that's awesome i think i'll have to put another set of lights over there at some point in time but i can't complain um it's not too bad at all so we have succeeded all right well i got everything just sort of packed in the corner over there and we can just do that when we're done at the end of the day and 
do this when we come in. And then the light switch over there is fine. So it's nice to have all these on one. Uh, let me get you a quick close up of what they actually look like hanging from the ceiling. Um, probably see it in the time lapse, kind of how I got them up there. But you can see that that row right there against those fluorescents. See what what's important about those fluorescents over there is that they have the uh, coating inside the bulb, the phosphorus. So they really do put out a little extra glow. But yeah, no, I can't complain. It's not too bad, right? Ain't so bad. Ain't perfect, but it ain't so bad. Okay, well, hopefully that was entertaining for you and you learned something. Um, I got to try to be quiet because it's super late and uh, I got to go take a shower now and get to bed. You're not used to seeing me with a hat, but I got my hair cut. Not a hat like this anyway. All right, read the Bible more, as I always say, and a very truthful statement. It's very important, very helpful, very awesome. So are you. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Thanks for watching. Brief update. I will be setting up a Patreon, so sometime in the near future, um, once I finalize that, I'll give you guys the thumbs up and you can go support me on these awesome projects. All right. That's pretty cool. I guess I'll go do this the way I should do it all. <laughs> ah, I got this touch panel monitor here working. Thanks to a few buddies on live stream for helping me figure out how to make this thing uh, do everything I wanted it to do and more. Okay, that's that. That's off. Thanks for watching. Peace. Hmm, still on. Ah, isn't that awesome? The cool part is, is everything is actually always off when it's off. Because that little power supply disconnects everything. Sweet. Oh, the GoPro's still running. <laughs>